BuzzFeed clashes with Vivek Ramaswamy, the former GOP presidential candidate who has invested in BuzzFeed, believes the company needs to pivot. He wants to see commentators like Tucker Carlson in its lineup. Shout out to Vivek on one of the ballsiest moves I have seen. This is is how you do it. I don't know if, if Vivek is sitting there watching Elon Musk being like, I'm jealous. You know, he, he buys Twitter, turns it into X, brings a bunch of accounts back. Vivek buys, what is it? What does he got? Like 8.3% mm-hmm. of BuzzFeed. Sent a letter to the company's board of directors saying they've got to change their business practices and journalistic efforts. They say, though he has been steadily buying up stock for months, his intentions for the company didn't become clear until this week. Before his brief run for president, he made a fortune in the pharmaceutical business. He's pushing BuzzFeed to add three new members to its board to hone its focus on audio and video uh, content and embrace greater diversity of thought. Uh, yeah, I got to be honest. If BuzzFeed brought on Tucker Carlson, their their market value would, would go tenfold. Oh, absolutely. Just bang. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if they can afford Tucker Carlson. Well, they they got to <laughs> pay him a lot Vivek of money. throughout also uh, Aaron Rodgers and, and Candace Owens, right? Like what yep. he's saying is, is you guys mm-hmm. had this old model and you had some success, but it's all falling apart now. And you need to you need to adopt a strategy. Mm-hmm. And I'm here to say, like one of the lines in his letter that he wrote to mm-hmm. them was, um, you know, I know you're going to instinctively reject what I'm saying because of partisan attitudes, but I think you should try and think about what I'm saying and the fact that 150 you know, American, million Americans uh, – tend to look at the world the way I do. Like, if you really want to be a sustainable business, you can't be siloed in one opinion. And I found that really fascinating. Uh, And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the fact that he has a business background and seeing him sort of see this opportunity is fascinating. Partially because this was like a stealth plan. He started buying these in January, right? And he mm-hmm. basically acquired, you know, somewhere over 3 million shares. Mm-hmm. Just really quietly, he did this. And right. Like, we were covered at Scanner last week. Uh, I think it was May 22nd. He had 7.7% of the company. And since then, he's he's gone up above 8. And his message was basically, I'm going to continue doing this, mm-hmm. uh, moving up his importance among the shareholders and saying, right. You could turn this around, but you have to do it this way. And I find this fascinating. Well, it's good. It's a good business decision. You know, I have frankspeech.com. We're on everything, Roco, everything now. But we add people. I added Lou Dobbs to our lineup in January. You're adding and get, getting the word out is, you know, to me, for right now, for, I think the biggest thing that, that has changed in our country that's helped is that, and I bring this up all the time, and this is our voice. I tell people January 7th and 8th of 2021 were two of the most important dates in history. Now, I don't know how long you've had this podcast, but I'm going to tell you why. On those two days, 1.2 million Americans were deplatformed, whether you were on Vimeo, YouTube, Suckabucks, Facebook, Twitter, or, you know, Donald Trump lost his 100 million on Twitter and all this. Everybody was silenced that had spoke out about anything to do with the elections or, or for that matter, vaccines, anything, anything they spoke out about that they decided to silence them. But the other one, everyone else was in fear because of January 6th. So at that point, no one's going to talk about anything. The media, every they, they had silenced us like any like, you know, like kind of like Nazi Germany. So I always compare it when I was growing up to a little black and white TV. We'd turn it off and go down to a little tiny dot. And we as kids would turn it back on and, and the black and white TV yep. would come back to life. Right? Right? You see who could get it the smallest. That voice was our dot that day. And like Ronald Reagan said, if you know, we're like a beacon of light on a hill. If the lights go out here, they go out everywhere. That's the day when we got past those two days where that that dot didn't that voice did not go out. Yeah. And since that time we've grown all these other media platforms like this, podcasts have grown, everything's going. So we're not getting our information from one source anymore. It's so diversified. You don't have just two social media platforms. You have a dozen. You know what I mean? BuzzFeed's market cap right now is around 120 million. Donald Trump just got, didn't he just earn some one point something billion dollar bonus truth, from Truth Social? Truth, yep. Trump could sell like 3% of his Truth shares and buy all of BuzzFeed. Right. So let's say he doesn't do that. Let's say he sells, you know, half a percent and then just buys a controlling stake of BuzzFeed. Right. Let's roll. What's he, what's right. he got going yeah. on? Well, the CEO responded to this letter from Vivek basically being like, you don't understand our market. You, you misunderstood. But as a shareholder, I welcome your feedback. And I think that's actually, you know, so BuzzFeed has had a ton of problems. I mean, we've talked about it on the show. They've had layoffs. They had to close BuzzFeed News. Uh, but I think his name's uh, Jonah Peretti. And I think he is kind of becoming the obstacle, right? Like any company is... Um, they're responsive well, to the board and the shareholders, but if their CEO is like, no, we're doing fine, it 
it's going to need a change in leadership to embrace any kind of new idea. All right. that matters is that Vivek keeps buying up more and more. Yeah. Right. And uh, I, I think this works out in favor for Vivek. When Vivek comes in and says, you guys are failing, you've got massive debt, you're hyper-partisan, you, you, you went from a billion dollar valuation down to less than 10% of your valuation. The CEO coming out and saying, nah, we're good. Stock price going to go down further. <laughs> I, That's right. I don't care if it's if it's Vivek buying buying the you know the hostile takeover, or if it's Elon Musk lawfaring Media Matters, or if it's Peter Thiel going after um what was it um who did Peter Thiel the, because of the Peter Hulk Hogan, Hogan. Uh, Gawker Gawker yeah taking them out the Hulk Hogan I, suit. yeah I don't I don't think that this is a bad thing at all if you've got media companies or whatever that are targeting individuals that are going after people and you know messing up their lives for in a you know essentially just so they can get a story um sometimes it's political sometimes it's not but for the most part it's just to get a story i mean look that someone might come after you and and mess up your business as well that's the way that it goes i don't see any kind of problem with it you know? No, I think it's fascinating. And again, like I think because Vivek had such a, a meteoric rise during the Republican primaries, I think it, the question was, well, what's next for him? And it is interesting to see someone who has been really successful in the pharmaceutical and biotech mm -hmm. industry, you know, me, you know, involved in drug tech research, uh, kind of pivot to being like, well, I can see that you were successful at one point, and I think I know where you're going wrong, mm -hmm. and to sort of put this challenge out there to uh, a media company, right? Like, right. Is, is BuzzFeed really trying to stay afloat, or are the politics the most important thing to them? Right. I, I actually was kind of surprised to see that BuzzFeed still existed, to be completely honest. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> when I heard the story that Vivek was buying, I was like, Really? Because I know BuzzFeed well, News. I, I think business. you're going to see a lot of shift in where you thought, like we thought, that all these all these outlets that did uh, destroyed themselves basically, that they're you know they're going to be taken and they're going to have to change, mm -hmm. um, or they will go out. They will be done. Look at this number one trending story on BuzzFeed right now: twenty four celebrities who are one hundred percent all in for Donald Trump twenty twenty four. Wow. So it, it changes looks, as it, soon as you click on the headline. That's 24 celebrities you might not feed. know are big Trump supporters. That's not even a bad one. It seems like, and there's nothing negative here. It's just showing them. It seems like uh, they may be listening to Vivek. I got to be honest. I bet other shareholders are probably saying, Jonah, he ain't mm. wrong. Mm. Look at the meteoric rise of all of these podcasts and how well they're doing. Yeah. Look, like, there's money here you're yeah. not tapping into. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sooner or later, Pride is going to go to his uh, executive editor or editor-in-chief and say, guys, we need more pro-Trump content. You'd, you'd mm -hmm. think that they'd look at uh, Joe Rogan and be like, we could do that. Yeah. It's, it's not that Joe's got a great thing going on and his personality is a huge part of why he's he's so successful. But also his his recipe is not particularly complex have a conversation and listen to the person that you're sitting down talking to and don't misrepresent what they say. Right. I, I mean, I, look, famously, to, at least for me, BuzzFeed was known for its quizzes, right? Where it would have these ridiculous quizzes, you know, tell me what your Taco Bell order is and I'll tell you, you, you know, never your dream done mansion. It. I think, honestly, they could lean into this in a soft way and be like, here's a quiz where we'll tell you what Donald Trump meme you are or, you know, whatever. Like, it doesn't have to be like they become 100 percent go hard for the MAGA movement. I understand that. Right? right. But if you're trying to capture more people, you have to present more than just this one side is dumb and bad. And here's how we're going to talk about it all the time. Right. Why would anyone go there? And top of the fact that especially, you know, a lot of their media ended up being just kind of repetitive. Right. You can't bring in new innovative creators like people writing the articles or making the quizzes or doing whatever if you're only siloed in one area of right. opinion you're not going to bring in new talent by being like but we only talk about things this way this, this is the list is pretty obvious it's people you probably knew about but uh i did not know that the naked cowboy of times square was a uh, trump supporter you guys <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with the naked Good cowboy for him. Do you guys yeah, know him. Yeah. i didn't know it, he was I know you, who he is. You've yeah. heard of him, right? Yeah. right? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's funny. Like, he's been going out, what, what is it, like 20 years? Or yeah, how long yeah. has he been in Times Square? It's a long time. A long, yeah. Long time. That's wild. Uh, Kelsey Graham or a Trump supporter? I didn't know that. I yeah, that, that doesn't shock me. I, yeah. They're all old people, though. Old white dudes. No, it, actually, and, and it's like young rappers. Right. <laughs> no, for real. Like, walk a flock of flame. I love that Trump is the <laughs> thing those two groups have in common. That's hilarious. That. You know, look, uh, 
I was telling this to the libertarians. The libertarian party is unfortunately like a lot of them. They're the people that pay attention and regular people mostly don't pay attention. So for people who are hyper plugged into the news and they want the most esoteric policies, they're going to be finding themselves the libertarian party. The realists who are not revolutionaries who pay attention to the news are going to find themselves supporting Donald Trump. And the people who only listen to MSNBC and other regurgitated corporate garbage are going to be crying because Donald Trump is a fascist and they need Joe Biden to save them. Mm -hmm. That's where we're currently at in this country. That's right. And now you've got, I think what we see with this Trump trial is the Democrats and the judge basically hoping that their voter base and what they're trying to do is they know we know. <laughs> That's right. But they're hoping the people who don't pay attention are just going to go, whoa. Well, yeah. No. Crazy. Mm. Well, this is what I think it's too late for them because, they, they, like I say, in the last three years, people are getting their news. For, it's so diversified now. They're not getting, like you're saying, you're staring at MSNBC and CNN hypnotized. I, I know yeah. this from my own family members. It took a long time for my extended family to know where these guys have come at least to the middle and going because they quit watching those and they're 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 social media, but it's even changing there on social media. I watched a, I watched a little a troll fight. Okay, I always watch that. I'll watch these bots and trolls fighting real people, right? And they're arguing with them. And there's overwhelming them the trolls and bots. A few years ago, it wasn't like that. You really and people don't realize all you gotta do is click on the bot. You see, they have two circles going. They have no friends, right? Two yeah. friends and and they're and uh, but they'll sit there and that has even changed. You look at any feed. Because I and and you'll have real people here, even on a a very left feed, you know, and there'll be this feed, and you'll see all these people there, and you'll have people there that have crossed over the common sense. You can see that they used to, and now they're arguing on there. Where before they're either sitting back and taking all this attacks, but now they're sticking up, and it's almost you know they're overriding the computer bots, you know. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.